on our consent agreement switch and match. Remember the last time we just took them all at one time. Would y'all like to do that again? Yes, ma'am. 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 Yes,
Two estheticians and one nail tech. Yes, ma'am. They would all have to take the. Um, did any of them take national? No, they all have they to take. They would all have to take the uh, the national and the state and the state. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'll make a motion that they be exempt the two estheticians and the 150 hours and uh, reciprocity for the nail tech, providing they take the uh, necessary. Exams they need to take. Yes, ma'am. It would be that's the national standards test and the state test that they are required to take for licensure. I, I second the motion that they be required to <coughs> fulfill the requirement to take the uh, national state and uh, test for Louisiana. And have a second. That was second. second. Oh, I'm sorry. She just <laughs> added on to the first. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, did we have to clear with the school or? That was only if they hadn't taken right. I got right. Yeah. Before they were like right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Since we don't have an attorney's report, do we have anybody out there yet? No, and it's now um, 9.36. That's so like 12 minutes more until I've seen them. Do you have a report? Oh, oh. Um, the first thing, and I think it was mentioned when some people were coming in, is that you do have an annual requirement to take ethics courses. Um, we ask that you provide that certificate together um, before December 31st, the deadline. Um, if the board is going to have any legislation, there's likely to be a special session, and we probably wouldn't put it in there. But right now, you need to be getting together things that you have for the regular session because those bills will be compiled early in the year. Um, as soon as the new legislature is inaugurated, that's when they will start providing bills. So, um, if we need to um, put together a package on that, we need to be working on that. We still have outstanding our rules revision, which hasn't been completed, and um, we might need a special meeting to do that. The contract for the um, computer based testing, um, I have approved it, and we are waiting for the company to provide us with a certificate showing that they're authorized to do business in the state of Louisiana, and hopefully, do you have it? I haven't received it, um, Nothing but we'll all. try to get that resolved this week, and then hopefully, we'll be able to move into the computer days. The renovations we need and um, the security additions so we can move to computer based testing. In the federal case involving Wayne Johnson, the court issued an order um, that he paid his board restitution in the amount of $1,775. We should be receiving payments. He was ordered to pay $100 a month until it was paid, and we should be in receiving the payments next year. The first hearing I want to take up today is um, in the matter of food, teenage UI, initial T, last name Lee, L E, doing business as LA Nails and Spa. And um, that's docket number 15-043. And I'd like to consolidate that for purposes of hearing within the matter of Food T Lee, which is docket number 15-044. Um, the respondents were both noticed for hearing today for nine o'clock. Um, the record should reflect that it is 9.38 and they haven't appeared, so we're going to proceed. I'd like to proceed in their absence. So, consolidated and proceed in their absence? Yes. Do I have a motion for that? that we proceed with the hearing? Yes, yes, it's yet. And consolidated. And consolidated. Okay. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? A way of opening statement and background. Um, LA Nails and Spa is a manicuring salon owned by Fu T. Lee, who is a manicurist. From the date the inspector was in the salon, he found two hot wax pots and supplies in, um, in indicating that waxing was being conducted there, and the hot wax pots were all on there. 
So I'm going to call Tasha just to identify the records and Shawanda to be the um, to identify what happened at the time of the inspection. But I'll ask that Shawanda, I mean Tasha Butler, be sworn. You can stay there, Tasha. Is that okay, Ellen? Turn around and come talk to Ellen. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony about to give be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Ms. Butler, uh, what's your job with the Louisiana State Department of Housing Geology? I'm an administrative program specialist. I basically send out all of the notices of informal hearings, notices of hearings, letters. And you're familiar with the licensing files at this office? Yes, ma'am. You're familiar with the licensing files of LA Nails and Spa? Yes, ma'am. And how's it licensed? As a um, manicuring salon. And the number ends in 2164 0. Yes, me. And who's the owner on our records of LA Nails and Spa? Tweet T. Lee. Okay, and Tweet T. Lee is licensed out. As a manicure. With license number ending in 2160. Yes, me. I'm giving you uh, four exhibits, uh, board exhibits 2, 3, um, 4, and 5, and I ask you to look at those, please. Mm -hmm. Ms. Uh, Butler, why don't you tell the board members, I think they know, what's the first letter or the first correspondence we send out to a respondent when a violation is um, found? An informal hearing notice. Okay, and it basically tells them that they have 10 days to send us a writing or to explain the situation? Yes. So do, is, what's board exhibits, uh, which are the informal notice letters? Um, board exhibit two mm -hmm. and board exhibit three. Okay. And did one go to LA Nails at Spa and one go to Food Tea Lee? Yes. They both go to their addresses of record? Yes, ma'am. Um, and can you tell if those two letters were received by those people at the addresses of record? Yes. Um, board exhibit two was <coughs> received on June 24th. Um, signed by someone who can't make up the statement. And that's the one that went to the uh, salon? To the salon's mm -hmm. address. Okay. And board exhibit three was also received on June 24th, received by Jonathan Law. And that's the one that went to the owner <coughs> and her address <coughs> the That's correct. <coughs> and what about the, with the other two exhibits, are those the notices of today's hearing? Yes, ma'am. And, and look on there, does it say what time and place the hearing is? Yes, December 7th at 9 o'clock at the Louisiana State Board of Cosmetology. Okay. And so which one went to who, and can you tell if it was received? Board Exhibit 4 went to the salon's address, mm -hmm. and it was received by Fong Lei. And Board Exhibit 5 was received by a Tui Lei. Okay. And we didn't get any written responses from these individuals, did we? No, ma'am. Right. Thanks. That's all the questions I have, Ms. Butler. I want to offer an evidence for exhibits 2, 3, 4, and 5. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do y'all have any questions, board members? Okay, I'll call Shalonda Johnson. Wait, I can. Okay. Is the salon licensed as a manicure or a cosmetologist? Manicure and salon. Manicure. Okay, thank you. Okay, Shalonda, why don't you sit in one of these chairs, but kind of look over here at Ellen, because she's got to hear you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Would you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you've got to give will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. Ms. Johnson, what's your job? Um, inspector. The Louisiana State Board of Cosmetology. And does, do, you, do you have a certain geographical area? I do, uh, the Orleans area. I'm just saying, um, Okay, does it include Hammond, Louisiana? Well, I'm going to show you what I marked as board exhibit one and ask if you recognize that. And is that a report you wrote? Yes, sir. It's an inspection report and a notice of violation? Yes, sir. And um, what salon was it at? Did you write it at? LA Nails and Spa. Okay, and who's the owner of LA Nails and Spa? Ty. Okay. And um, so you went just to a place outside of your area? I was instructed by um, my surprise at I mm -hmm. um, in the conversation on the phone call that I was being mm -hmm. requested to go to this district. Okay, and that's not uncommon, is it? Okay. All right, and um, what's the date of that inspection report? May 21st, 2015. All right, and did you find a violation on that day? Yes, I did. I found um, two separate warrants, two hot wax and hots that were over. And there were supplies mm -hmm. uh, indicating that there was flexing services being um, done. Okay. And how is the salon licensed? 
has a manicure salon. All right. And can isn't are manicuring salons out allowed to do waxing? Yeah. All right. And so that's what the, that's the report you wrote, and that's what you wrote on those reports. Okay. okay. I want to offer an evidence board exhibit one is identified by Miss Johnson. Board members have any questions? That's all I have. You want to pass that one around? Go ahead and pass it around. <coughs> Yeah. 
set it up as a solo. Mm -hmm. As a composite. As a composite. Mm -hmm. But, okay, yes. Mm -hmm. You're right. So should we make that recommendation? Once we, I guess we need to talk about it or whatever we choose to well, I, I think it's a good idea to to remind each, even cosmetology salons, because there are things that, like, if they're giving manicures and pedicures, they need to be reminded you can't use a credo blade. I mean, even I don't care what kind of salon you are. So, I think it would probably wouldn't hurt to just have a a notice to all salons this cosmetology. Nail salons, esthetician salon. Make sure that you follow the guidelines that are in the law that you can do. You know, because don't you think, inspectors, yes, that that would be helpful? It is very helpful. And time, it's just your timing. Well, it could just go out with the um, with their license. license. Yeah, with their, their new license. license. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, if you had cosmetologists there. I wonder if the cosmetologists were the ones doing laughing. Well, it still doesn't um, matter. Right. They might but they need just to know. I right. just, yeah, yeah, yeah they I can think, understand that. They might think they can because yeah. there's cosmetologists. Yeah, that's what they think. And, yeah. Yeah. But and do they, they know they can change their yeah. salon to they a cosmetologist? So, so maybe we could suggest uh, we have to get the word out. I mean, if, if he could. It's a shame he didn't come. You exactly. Know, exactly. <coughs> exactly. So have, uh, again, right. the order because and she for us to educate them sorry. what they would need to do. Right. You know, and what would they need to do, you know, so they wouldn't be in violations, you know, that we could help them. Exactly. I just, my personal feeling is I think they've been in their business long enough. I feel that um, I when the word is out there in reference to the rules, they do tell each other. They do know the rules and regulations. I do feel that they still follow their own rules and regulations. Um, so for this salon, as talking to him as how long they've been open, mm -hmm. they were open long enough to know that they needed to be licensed as a full service salon. That's my feelings on my inspection. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Okay, that concludes the board's case. I'll submit proposed findings of fact and conclusions of law. I had a typographical error on um, one of my proposed findings, and I just hand wrote the correction in on it. Somewhere. Okay. That's two sets. Do y'all want to um, deliberate on this one, or do y'all want to hear both cases? Or what? Let's hear both cases. Shalana, you can stay there. That's okay. I just have to ask one. I'm sorry. One thing. Is this their first violation? I'm not sure. It's the first one I've ever written to them. Again, that is not my district. Um, according to my records, my review of the records, yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. The next case, um, and the, we'd like to consolidate the next two for purpose different. of hearing. Are you all ready? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And then um, pass it around. It's a 43 and a 44. What are the third findings? Two sets. One 43 and one I'd just like to say, we have, and the inspectors can attest to this, we have had a number of nail salons who have gone to cosmetology full service salons, which makes them legal to do whatever they want to, they need to do. But as long as we have state law that says, this is what you can do if you're a cosmetology shop, this is what you can do if you're a manicure salon, this is what you can do if you're an esthetician salon. We, as a board, have to follow those laws. Right. We yes. can't break them. So if if we can help them get to the point that they are doing it legal, that's great. But we, till we do that, we have got to follow what's in our law. Mm -hmm. Could we make a, uh, I'm pretty sure our inspectors are great. I know that they are. But because of this, 
and talking about it now, maybe we can ask, give our inspectors a letter to make sure to, to encourage them in that direction in terms of letting them know, making them all aware that they should and intend to, to want to offer these waxing services and all that they should turn into should uh, exchange their license in the for um, uh, Which would mean license. they would need a cosmetologist. They already have cosmetology yeah. right. But they would have to follow the rules for the yeah. cosmetology salon, have a manager that's a cosmetologist, and then you're, you're legal mm -hmm. that way. And the cosmetologist has to be black, right. not the manager. So I, right. I'd like to make that motion that, they, that we send out letters to all the manicure salons to advise the uh, of the status of the situation today, and I'm um, not to listen to the salon, sorry, to our to inspectors, to, inspectors, yes. sorry, I love myself. to make sure to advise the salon owners to, of their option to be legal for it. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so the next two cases we want to consolidate for purposes of hearing is docket number 15-045 in the matter of Duong, D-U-O-N-G, last name Nguyen, N-G-U-Y-E-N, doing business as Hollywood Nails and Spa, and that's a cosmetology salon, license number 0820-1. Want to consolidate it with docket number 15-046 in the matter of Duong Nguyen, manicurist license number 0820. And allow the consolidation to the the hearing. Yes. Well, I'd like this to note that the record reflects that today that it's 10, 9.57 a.m. This matter is noticed today for hearing at 9 o'clock a.m. and that um, no one's present representing either Dong Wong Nguyen or um, Hollywood Nails and Spa and I'd like to proceed in their absence because the record's going to reflect that they both not only were sent notices to the correct address, but received notices of that address of today's hearing. Mm -hmm. So can we proceed? Yes. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, by way of our opening statement, Hollywood Nails and Spa is owned by Duong mm -hmm. Nguyen, and it is in New Orleans, Louisiana, and it is licensed as a cosmetology salon. Duong Nguyen is the owner of Hollywood Nails and Spa, and Duong Nguyen is licensed as a manicurist. On May 19th, when Shalanda the inspector was present, an unlicensed individual was uh, found to be performing eyebrow waxing at the salon. Now, it's a cosmetology salon, so they can do eyebrow waxing. However, the person who was doing eyebrow waxing was not licensed as anything by this board. So that's the evidence that we're going to show. I'm going to call Miss Butler first and ask that she be sworn in talk about the notices that were sent. Do you solemnly swear that the testament you have to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and the whole truth, so help me God? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Butler, uh, just state your name for the record and tell us what you do for the Louisiana State Board of Cosmetology. Tasha Butler, Administrative Program Specialist, responsible for mailing out notice of hearing letters, informal hearing letters, and anything else administratively. Okay, and are you familiar with your capacity with the licensing file of Hollywood Nails and Spa? Yes, ma'am. How is it licensed by this board? As a cosmetology salon. And who's the owner of record? Duong Nguyen. And what's the number of that cosmetology salon? Is it 0820-1? Yes, ma'am. And is Duong Nguyen also licensed by this board? Yes, ma'am. And how is Duong Nguyen licensed? As a manicurist. And is that number 0820? Yes, ma'am. Okay, did you send out first the informal hearing notices to Duong Nguyen and Hollywood Nails and Spa regarding the violation that occurred, alleged violation on May 19, 2015? Yes, ma'am. And what exhibits are those informal hearing letters? Board exhibit number two and board exhibit number three. And board exhibit two went to the salon at its address of record? Yes, ma'am. On Gentilly Boulevard in New Orleans? That's correct. And did Board Exhibit 3 go to the owner, Duane Nguyen, at the owner's address of record on Reed, R-E-A-D Lane in New Orleans? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any indication whether these letters were received at those addresses? Yes, ma'am. I received the green cards back, you know, sign that they were received. They were signed by an individual. can't read the signature, but they were signed by someone. So you got a green card back for both Board Exhibit 2 and the Board Exhibit 3? Yes, ma'am. And the date of your letters was what? June 22nd. And um, Board Exhibit 2, there's no date on the green card, is it? Correct. 
Live on Board Exhibit 3, what's the date on the green card? June 24th. Um, and this letter tells them that they can send us a written response. Do we receive a written response from any of these individuals? No, ma'am. All right. And then did you also send out the hearing notices for the hearing today? Yes, ma'am. And what exhibits are those? Board exhibit number four and five. What's the date of those two letters? October 28th. 2015? Yes, ma'am. And you send these both certified and regular mail? Yes, ma'am. All right. And board exhibit four went to the salon at its address of record? Yes, ma'am. And it told them when the hearing was? That's correct. And what's the date it told them the hearing was going to be in time? December 7th, 2015 at 9 o'clock at the Louisiana State Board of Cosmetology office. Okay. And is there a green card that you got back showing that the letters was received at the address of record? Yes, ma'am. And that's on board exhibit four for the salon? Yes, ma'am. What about for the owner? Is that board exhibit five? Yes, ma'am. Um, and it told her, it gave the owner the date of the hearing as well, same date, time, and place? Yes, ma'am. Um, and the date of that letter is what? October 28, 2015. And you sent it to the owner at the owner's address of record? Yes, ma'am. And did you get the green card back showing the letters received at that address of record? Yes, ma'am. Um, and it was signed for, and does, we have a date of the, of the signature? It was signed for, but I don't have the date of delivery. Um, well, look on board exhibit five. You don't see board exhibit five. That's where we stamped it. Oh, that's you, you're yeah. stamped. It yeah, we November stamped it. Second. In, okay. It came back to the office on November the second. Okay, so that's right. not the date of the post office. No. All right, good. Thanks for that clarification. I'd like to offer in um, connection with Miss um, Butler's testimony board exhibits two, three, four, and five. We'll accept. Do y'all have any questions of Miss Butler, board members? No. Okay, I ask that Ms. Johnson be sworn. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony of Ashley will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. Uh, Ms. Johnson, our uh, first question is what do you think of diamonds on your arm? Oh, God, this is cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon all of a sudden I just saw a lot of bling. <laughs> um, what is your job with the Louisiana State Board of Cosmetology? Cosmetology. Uh, inspector for District 23 for the Board of Cosmetology. Okay, and does that include the area where uh, Hollywood Nail Spa is located on Gentilly Boulevard in New Orleans? Yes, it does. Okay, and I've handed you a copy of Board Exhibit 1. Do you recognize that? Yes, I do. What is it? An inspection report. It's, the, it's two pages. The first page is an inspection report. The second page is a link to body. Okay, and did you write those? Yes, I did. Okay, and on what date? May 19, 2015. At what location? At the 3120 Jason Boulevard. And what's the name of the business that's there? Hollywood Wolf. What's the name of the owner of that business? No. Okay, and when you were present that day, did you find uh, any violation? I did. And that's um, written on the second page of notice of violation. Mm -hmm. What violation <coughs> did you find? The violation said there was an unlicensed worker performing an eye bar lesson. Now, how is Hollywood Nails and Spa licensed? Um, they are licensed <coughs> as a full service salon. As a cosmetology salon. <coughs> so it's okay for eyebrow waxing to take place in a cosmetology salon. Yes, it is. If it's done by a licensed worker, right? Yes. So the problem with this one was they were waxing eyebrows and the person who was waxing was unlicensed. Yes, she was. All right. I'm going to offer and introduce the evidence as board exhibit one, the um, exhibit identified from Ms. Johnson. Ms. Johnson, why don't you go ahead and pass it around if Ms. Hand admits it. Mm -hmm. Ms. Hand, you're going to admit it in evidence? So admit it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's all the questions I have of Ms. Johnson. Board members have any questions for Ms. Johnson? Yes, I do. When you walked in and you found that she was not, uh, you know, a worker and she didn't have license, did you tell her? I mean, did she say anything? Did, you, did she stop working? Did upon me doing the inspection, um, walking through the salon, I did speak with her because I witnessed her doing the wax, and at that time, of course, she pretended she didn't understand what I was saying. She didn't pretend she understood English. So at that time, I'm speaking to the manager of the salon mm -hmm. to let them know that you have an unlicensed worker. Um, and they could not provide any licenses. They could not even provide me an ID for her. 
Um, so at that time, I did let them know that they were, he, he was working with an unlicensed person and that she could not do that. Do you know if they had a manager? Actually, the owner was there that day. And the owner was actually there. Are they a cosmetologist? He is a manager. Okay. Is he aware he has to have a cosmetologist as a manager? Yes, he's aware. Did they have one? Um, on that day, I believe that day, I think I had two people in the day this day. To my recollection, no, there was not a cosmetologist or an institution on the staff for this. Anyone ask any question? And, and if Miss um, Jill would have the same question as last time, this is the first violation for this show. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I know. That was good. <laughs> yeah. oh, no, thanks. I like to make a comment. After all this uh, correspondence and knowing what they're accused of, and not to attend this uh, hearing in order to defend themselves, I mean, isn't that like? An admission of guilt? Mm -hmm. I mean, they knew. Not as no. a matter of law. It's no. not. Okay. I mean, you know, um, not as a matter of law. Okay. You know. Just and if I would have asked Ms. Butler the question, um, if we could call her back, did we get any written um, correspondence from them in response to any of the letters? No, I still have to prove the case. It doesn't, yes. you know, right. doesn't mean that they're definitely in violation. So that's all that I have to submit on behalf of the board. I have two sets of proposed findings of fact and conclusions of law.
I didn't have any um, disagreement with the proposed findings of fact for document number 43. I'm going to move to accept the proposed motion. I'll make that motion that we accept the proposed motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Ms. Hayden, if I can just submit to you that on um, number seven, it, you have to pick between did and did not appear. Yes, we just should put that in the caption. Okay. yourself to advise them of a selected law and you haven't advised them of every law sometimes they get the feeling well the board told me this but they didn't tell me that mm -hmm. so I think a better thing a suggestion would be send them a copy of the goal book with their mm -hmm. you know decision or something but when you start picking selective laws to advise them of because they're supposed to know every law then they're saying well they told me that one but no they didn't tell me this one that's the only time, I, that's what I kind of worry about sometimes. Mm -hmm. Just throwing that out there for what it's worth. You know, and, and I know you say, well this, well, this is the time the one they violated, so we want to advise them, and so it makes some kind of sense. It's just a kind of a, kind of a big wire thing I'm, I'm never comfortable with sometimes. Well, that's fine, but in the gold book, it doesn't specifically say. Um, I mean, it's kind of, I don't know, it's just kind of hard to know what it is. It still says the cosmetology salon has to have, you know, the chairs and the shampoo mm -hmm. bowls and it doesn't clarify that a cosmetolo cosmetology salon does not have to offer all three. In the rules it, does. it says that you need this equipment if you offer this service. If you offer. Mm -hmm. It does. Um, and another thing is that this violation occurred on May 21st and they may not have the same workers and so they may not actually have a cosmetologist in mm -hmm. there. Thank you for that because I think that's a good clarification. It just, you know, it just, I mean, once you take it on your duty to advise them of a certain law, then they say, well, they didn't tell me about this law. Yeah. You know, that's the only, I kind of worry about that yeah. sometimes. Okay. Right. You know, because yeah. um, mm -hmm. they're supposed to know them all. So you might remind them to check their rules or to. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you know, or particularly the rules related to manicuring salons because you're a manicuring salon. But well, I, that's the reason I think it would be good if we, when we send out their license, if we just have the separate salons and what each one can do, and then they know. I mean, it's not calling attention just to one law. Do you think? Mm. Or you could just say refer to pages blah 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 in the gold book for more. Well, the everybody's supposed to have that gold book in their salon. Either. They are. Um, if I can say, um, and specifically for this salon, Ms. Jewel, um, I find in the industry for us, the nail salons, that they do a lot of selling. You know, when I go back to this one, it'll be sold to somebody else. And a lot of times they are given the rules and the regulations. That is the first thing that I ask them for. So I feel that they are responsible. Do not be ignorant to the law. You have, I'm checking it off that you have it when I open you. So I did open them. The gold book, you mean? Yes. Okay. And I do literally tell them to download the 57 pages. And I physically see the 57 pages because I don't want you to tell me you didn't know. Okay. I want you to know. 
-hmm. And I hold you to those laws and regulations. Mm -hmm. So this guy did know mm -hmm. what the laws and regulations are. So and I find that all of the laws are like that. Every one I open, I make sure they know. So when I go back and I catch a violation, it was not because you did not know. It was a choice. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, going back to the um, <laughs> conclusions of law, um, the proposed conclusions of law are violations of um, God Statute 37581A. Um, that's the person engaging in the classified of the certificate of registration for the appropriate area of practice. So, I'm going to determine whether you believe that's applicable to this case. This is the case of LA Mail. Do you want to go through all three of them? And then I agree with A. Yes. What about B? The second proposed violation is by Statute 37. 600A3, engaging in your unprofessional conduct likely to endanger the health, safety, and welfare of the public. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anybody disagree? Yes. The third uh, proposed violation is. Um, 37600812, which be, would be a violation of any provision in this chapter, and it would be related to violations of the rules. Okay. 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 And then the proposed, once you have um, proposed violation, you found <coughs> violation, then we need to enter a proposed order. Um, order um, Based upon the violations, you have the ability to revoke the license, suspend the license, place the right license on probation, and to find the license or any combination of those things that are not inconsistent. Does anybody have a proposal with respect to the status of the license, revocation, or suspension? I don't, I, I really don't want to take anybody's right to work away. I would, uh, Put it on probation. Or suspend It is their first violation? Mm -hmm. For this gentleman, yes. Mm -hmm. This salon had uh, had two violations prior to before Miss Amy Kidd and sold it to him. You don't know what they were? I do know. Um, again, unlicensed workers. Third time. Right. This is, but this, this is a new owner. This is a new owner. owner. A new but this is, is a new owner. owner. So, but this is the first case. For him. Like delivering the first case. Mm -hmm. That you all heard, which is mm -hmm. LA in nails and spa. This is the one with the wax oh, spa. Yes. And we really can't give you evidence after, but the only evidence you have it was their first violation. Put him on probation. Okay, so generally, to put him on uh, probation, there's a suspension for a period, and the suspension is suspended if there's a fine and the fine is paid, or if there's compliance with other terms. And then, um, they serve a probationary period is kind of a standard um, penalty that you all have imposed. Long so we can suspend the license for until it's paid. Um, and, and then once it's paid, then we can put on probation. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the amount of something to determine what the fine would be. Well, we, it's, it's recommended for six hundred dollars. Okay. Right. The majority of your board. I see it. I see it. I see it. Two years probation. So the two-year probation would apply to the salon and the owner, or just the owner? We're just on the salon. Just the salon. Okay. 43 is the salon case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they can change the name, then it won't be the same salon. Is the same this salon. particular salon. It's the same location. <laughs> so, uh, so, so it just goes by location? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
thing. They just changed the name at the same time as they changed the owner at the different school. So does anybody have a proposal about the um, status of the license or the term of probation? If that's what you're considering. Do you have comments not to remove? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. the suspension mm -hmm. versus suspending. And what would be the period of the suspension? I think we've been doing one to two years. Well, considering that this so is not first their first time. time. This is the first time. I'm sorry, I was reading that first time. I said, could you suspend the license until um, the terms of the order are complied with? What would be the period that you would want that suspension? Um, I mean, it's been one to two years, I think, since it's a first year for me. Suspension or probation? <coughs> Mm -hmm. Suspension. Yeah. Um, so suspension. So until all phones are changed. Until all phones are changed. Okay. But they weren't suspending the suspension. No, it's one year probation. Right. Yeah. One year probation? Yeah, that's okay. what she has said. Okay, so one year probation. <coughs> Does anybody disagree with the one year probation? I agree with it. Um, and then there's terms of probation that are proposed here to cease and desist providing waxing services or having a waxing machine or supplies present at the license location. Does anybody disagree with that term of probation? I agree with it. Mm -hmm. um, it requires posting of the order in a conspicuous place near the manicuring salon license. Does anybody disagree with that term? No. no. Um, but the first one, cease and desist providing waxing services present at the license location. I mean, that sounds like they can't, um, well, as long as they're just a manicure salon, just they don't, they can't wax. Wax. I, if they are just put at, uh, until which time the salon unless properly licensed. Unless properly licensed, right. So, I mean, they need to know that but it would be a new license if they apply for a cosmetology so it's a whole new license. So it would get a new license number and everything. Because it would be a different type of... So we need to leave it like it is. You can put unless properly licensed. I, 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 I read it, it sounds like it just has to be taken out. What did you see? Okay, the final term suggested um, is that while they're on probation, they not be found guilty of violating any state or federal laws or regulations. Does anybody, yeah. anybody disagree with that? Does anybody have any additional terms that they think need to be added? Okay. Are we all discussing? I mean, do you have something to they add? Can't per they cannot participate in this. Oh. Okay. Um, so does Sorry. anybody have an additional term that y'all want to add? So yeah. these terms are sufficient? Fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then there's a proposed sign of six hundred dollars. Does anybody disagree with that or have another no. proposal? No, we agree. All right, I agree. I agree. Sorry, I can't speak for that. Okay. <laughs> um, there the next term is to um, assess costs in connection with these proceedings. Does anybody disagree with that? No. Yeah. Anybody have a proposed amount? We generally for it. Um, $600 per hour, $650 per hour. We had an interpreter present. Mm -hmm. I recommend that we go as, as normal to choose uh, to charge a $600 per hour. Okay. So does anybody disagree with that? Uh -uh. No. Okay, so just to summarize the board. Um, to make sure everybody's in agreement. The proposed findings would be accepted, except number seven, which would be reflected um, as to who is present. Um, the conclusions of the law would be accepted um, as they were proposed. And the proposed order would be to place the, um, the shop license um, 
suspend it until all terms of the order are complied with, including the payment of costs, and then that thereafter they can be placed on a um, probation for a period of one year, subject to the terms proposed, except that the prohibition of the wax and machine supplies would be at the licensed location unless properly licensed. The cost would be set at $600. Do I have a motion for that? <coughs> motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. And then that second part of the case, which was consolidated for hearing purposes, is docket number 15044. And that's the individual license of Pete Lee. Um, and that's a manicurist license. He was the owner of the shop in the previous docket. The proposed findings are the same. Um, set number seven. That his appearance will be noted in the caption. Does anybody have any um, concerns or corrections to the proposed findings or any addition? Yeah. How long is this going to be? I think I've heard some How long is it going to The will I at least have long? Mm -hmm. <coughs> She said it had been licensed for a long time. Been, that's what I said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's it. Yeah. <coughs> well, okay. I think that. Um, can anybody have any additions to the findings? No. Um, the proposed conclusions of law. The first proposal is that this, this constitutes a violation of Revised Statute 37 581A which provides that no person shall engage in the practice of cosmetology without obtaining a current certificate of registration for the appropriate area of practice under the um, Cosmetology Practice Act. Does anyone agree with that? I agree with that. I agree. Does anyone disagree with that applause? The second proposed violation is engaging in unprofessional conduct likely to endanger the health, safety, and welfare of the public. And that violation would be a revised statute 37600A3. Does anybody disagree with that? No. Mm -hmm. no disagree. Um, the third violation would be a revised statute 37600A12, which would be a violation of any provision of the chapter, which would relate also to the rules um, for allowing waxing to be conducted in a manicure in the salon. Does anybody disagree that that applies? No. Okay. So, having found three violations, then we need a proposed order. Um, based upon those violations, the board has the authority to revoke, suspend, um, and or fine the licensee. Does anyone have a suggestion as to the license status? Uh, I think it will okay. come in probation. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if it's a new violation, you know, they, they should be definitely put on probation. Does anyone disagree with uh, suspension of the license and placing them on probation? No. no. Okay, so nobody's in favor of revoking. No. no. Okay, so. so then it would be um, suspending the license until um, the fine costs are paid and the order is complied with, similar yeah. to the salon. Mm -hmm. And then the period of probation for the salon is one year. Do you all want to see the same period of probation? Mm -hmm. Correct. One year. Okay. So proposed conditions for probation are the filing immediately cease and desist providing wax and services at LA Nails and Spa. Yes. Anybody disagree? Um, <coughs> Wait, he didn't do it, right? Was he, was this person doing the right thing? He's the only He's the only one. I know, but the that, testimony was that was no the client at the time. It was just this. That um, wax spots were. No one was there. there. Um, <coughs> um, but isn't that only the salon thing? Yes, but he's the owner. Perhaps. I want it here. Perhaps you could put <laughs> offering waxing services in substitution of providing if that's your concern. Yes, that's that's more specific. It has no it has no other <coughs> to, to the mm -hmm. to the individual. Okay. Does anybody um, 
Does everybody agree that condition one should be included in the order? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Right. Um, With the change. With the correction. Substituting the word offering for provide. Correct. That's more relaxing. Okay. And then um, the next con proposed condition is placing the order in the conspicuous place near the manager's license. Does anybody disagree that that's an appropriate condition? Okay. Uh, the next one would be that finally the <coughs> owner and also the salon not violate or be found guilty of violating any state, local, or federal laws or regulations including or but not limited to those laws and regulations relating to manicurists and manicuring salons. Does everybody agree with that condition? Yes. Does anybody have any additional conditions they'd like to add? Um, um, why wouldn't we put um, not limited to laws and regulations related to salons licensed by this board? Because if they change it to a cosmetology salon and they still violate, you wouldn't be able to do anything. Right? Except if they change it to a cosmetology salon, the order goes away because they don't yeah. exist anymore. The order wouldn't be against the cosmetology salon. But, I, it, but, but his just, personal license, we're talking about, not oh, yeah, yeah, the you're salon right. license. We're you're talking right. about him. You're right. You're right. Okay. So your proposal is to remove two manicures and then and or manicuring is, and add after salons licensed by this board correct relating to any salon licensed by this board all right does anybody have any objection to that substitution mm -hmm. okay so um moving on to the fine the proposed fine is six hundred dollars does anybody have an objection or another proposal Okay, the for costs incurred connection with these proceedings are to be taxed to the licensee. Does anybody disagree with that? No, does anybody disagree with the six hundred dollar amount that was in the order? Well, they're paying it once, so they need to pay it twice. Okay, so leave once. it on the salon. Yeah. Okay. Don't you think? Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna remove the cost paragraph. Right. Everybody agrees with that. Okay, let me just go back over it so we make sure we have everything correct. The proposed findings would be as um, presented with exception number seven, which will be in the appearance clause. The proposed conclusions of all will be accepted as um, with the handwritten correction that's in here to correct the name of the salon. The proposed order would be to suspend the licensee until the order is complied with, including all costs, all fines paid, there will be no cost, so we can delete that language. And they'll be placed on probation for a period of one year. During that one year, they have to um, immediately cease and, des and desist offering waxing services. Um, number two will stay as stated. And number three will be that they have not limited to laws and regulations relating to salons licensed by this board. The fine will be $600, and then the cost will be deleted throughout the order because the cost paragraph has been removed. Does anybody have any additions, corrections? Um, I think, actually, instead of assessing the cost to the salon, it needs to be applied to the person. Right, wait, someone... This, these are two different people? No, no. it's the same way. Because, yeah, like you should. said, if they um, change to a cosmetology salon, this goes away, right? So they don't have to pay the $600. No, the order to pay still exists, but the okay. order that your salon can't do X doesn't exist. But the order to pay still exists. But once your salon goes away, then it can't be on probation anymore. It's gone. But the order to pay doesn't go away. It's kind of crazy, but yeah. But if we did it on his personal license, we would. He was still in violation before he changed. He should be responsible allowing that happening in his salon. What we okay, did, and I don't know if y'all specifically. Sometimes y'all split it, and sometimes you put it on one order. And um, let me just look at the language. Usually the individual is responsible for paying all of their personal costs and those assessed against the salon. And the proposed funding, Sherry, we, we put a, the last paragraph in each, and y'all didn't really discuss that one. In each order, I said the license is suspended until all costs paid in this case and the other case are paid in full. 
in that last, you see that last mm -hmm. the, I, I, in the proposed order? Mm -hmm. That kind of takes care of it, I think. I think if they're both fine, it sends a stronger message and a, access a, a stronger deterrent to, to, to um, violate on this like, under these circumstances. But the cost are, we, we combine the cases. I don't see how you can do costs for two different cases if we combine them and hurt them But together. somebody had to make made a decision to do it. Can you look at the right. last page where it says it's heard the order was just decreed that before the license applied, we can, can be considered for reinstatement all fines set out herein and in the other docket must be paid in full. That's the last paragraph. So they're connected and that's how you all usually do it is to connect the owner Okay. To the salon. Mm -hmm. So they have to clear everything before they can renew. Okay. Because it's the individual that's making the decision to violate, okay. not the salon itself. Okay. That's standard language that you have in orders. So we'll just remove the cost provision out of there, out of this one, since it's another one. But it will still be linked. Okay. okay. Does everybody agree with that? Yes. Does somebody want to move approve? Motion. I make a motion to agree with uh, uh, setting on the uh, document. I'll second. 43 and 44. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The next item that we have is document number 45, and that's um, the salon owned by Don Lynn called Hollywood Nails and Spa. And this, as you will call, is a little bit different violation. This salon is licensed as a cosmetology salon, but the person performing services um, was not licensed. So as far as the proposed findings of fact, um, one through five, does anybody have any questions or corrections about those? Nope. Anyone disagree with any of them? No. no. Okay, moving on to the conclusions of law. The first um, conclusion proposed is that the violation um, of Revised Statute 37591D1, which requires that in order to obtain a certificate of registration as a salon, the owner shall certify that all persons employed um, are appropriate licensed for their by their appropriately appropriate licensing board that's what I said um does anybody disagree that that applies to this case um the next violation proposed is revised statute 37 a it says no person licensed by the board shall permit any person in his or her employee employ or under supervision or control practice cosmetology who does not have an appropriate certificate of registration. Does anybody disagree that that applies? No. Next uh, proposed violation is of Title 37, 600A3, engaging in unprofessional conduct likely to endanger the health, safety, and welfare of the public. Does anyone disagree that that applies? No. <coughs> Next proposed violation is of 600A12, violating any provision of the chapter, which would include a rules violation by allowing an unlicensed um, individual to perform aesthetic services. Does anyone disagree that that applies? No, no, no. Okay. Moving on to the proposed order. Um, given that you all find four violations, you have the ability to suspend, revoke the license, and to fine it and assess costs. Um, does anyone agree that the license should be revoked? No. No. Okay, so remove that option. Does anyone agree that the license should be suspended? Since it's a good violation, I would think that we would put them on probation. Generally, when we suspend. put them suspend. on probation, they suspend so, until compliance right. with the order. And then they serve a period of probation. Does anybody mm -hmm. have a recommendation on the period of probation? I recommend that oh, well, uh, we serve, um, put on probation for a year. Do mm -hmm. so have any other suggestions? Or mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. okay. um, <coughs> all right, the proposed conditions of probation would be. Um, 
to provide in writing to the board within 15 days of the date of the order the name address <coughs> of each licensed cosmetologist, esthetician, and manicurist um, working at this particular salon. Does anybody disagree with that term? I mean, it's the holidays. 15 days. I don't know. You want to give them a little bit longer? Yeah. Okay. Today is the seven so um, 15 days of the 20 you want to say by january 3rd whatever sure. the first business day january yes. is january 4th mm -hmm. yeah january 4th mm -hmm. okay by january 4th they would have to report that information okay um the second proposed condition is that the salon provide the board writing the name address and cosmetologist esthetician manicuring license number of any individual hired or contracted with um, prior to allowing them to perform services. Does anybody disagree with that condition? They can just fax that into the board. It can have a fax machine. It can email. Yeah, they can. They email. I'm sure. Yeah. If you can scan it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The one they just send an email yeah. saying we have hired whoever, effective whatever mm -hmm. day. <coughs> Does everybody agree with that condition? I agree. I agree. Okay. The next <coughs> proposed condition is that they provide the name, address, and median cosmetologist, esthetician, and the insurance license of any individual ceasing to perform services within five days. That the individual ceases to perform services, so you will know a lot to allow the board to know if all their operators have left or, um, to be able to track how many operators are there. I agree. Anybody disagree with that? I don't know. I mean, if all my operators leave, that's the last thing I'm always worried about is sending you all that information. <laughs> well, they need to let us know if they um, Is this a cosmetologist one? Yes. Mm -hmm. They need to let us know if. Um, the manager changes, or if do they even have they a cosmetology manager? They don't. They have to have a cosmetology manager so long as they're a cosmetology salon. If they only say they only employ one cosmetologist and that person leaves, then right? That's, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is just to track what type of licensees and how many are there. They have five days to report it after they. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody disagree with that or have a revision to that? Okay. No. Not that my leaves are so. Yeah, and if you want to take the ceases it. out, that's okay. You yeah. know, the purpose of this whole thing was to get them to look to make sure the person is licensed right. before they hire them. You know, because they said, sometimes they'll tell me, I didn't know she was one licensed. Well, mm -hmm. it's your responsibility to find right. out that she okay. is. So the purpose of it is to get them, make them look. Right, and then if they only have one cosmetologist, then that's something that needs to be looked at by the staff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so number three, everybody's okay with? Or mm -hmm. yes. Okay, no <coughs> cosmetologist, esthetician, or manicurist may provide cosmetology services unless written notice is provided to the board as set forth herein, which just relates to the above. Conditions that they have to report their workers. Does anybody have no any suggestions <coughs> with respect to that proposal? Mm -hmm. okay. um, that the copy of the noted order has to be posted in a conspicuous place near the salon license. Does anybody disagree? No. And that um, they may not violate or be found guilty of violating any state or federal laws or regulations pertaining to cosmetology salons. Anybody disagree with that? Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any additional conditions they think should apply? Okay. Um, the proposed fine is eight hundred dollars. Does anybody disagree with that? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. okay. And then um, the word costs being assessed against the licensee. Does anybody disagree with that? Anybody agree, disagree with the $600 assessment? Okay. And then that last paragraph just says that 
both dockets have to be paid. They're tied together. Right. They're consolidated. Just to recap what I think our order looks like at this point is that the proposed findings of that will be accepted, 135. Um, the order will note that no one appeared on behalf of the individual or someone. That um, the conclusions are accepted. And so with those four violations, the proposed order would be to suspend the license until costs and fines are paid and then the, thereafter the licensee placed on one year probation. They would have till January 4th rather than the 15 days proposed to report all their workers and then the additional conditions would proposed would be accepted. The fine would be in the amount of $800 and cost in the amount of $600. Anybody have any revisions to that? Mm -hmm. Is there a motion on this topic? I have a motion. I make a motion to accept this. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, the last docket is 15-046, um, and that's <coughs> the win. And this, he was the owner of the cosmetology salon. Hollywood Nails and Spa. The proposed funds of fact are similar. They concern the notices. So um, does anybody have any questions or revisions to one through five? And then number six, it will be noted that in the order that there was no appearance on behalf of Mr. Wynn. The proposed conclusions of law are first that there was a violation of Revised Statute 37 591B1, which requires, in order to obtain a certificate of registration as a beauty shop or salon, the owner shall certify that all persons employed at the facility are appropriately licensed. Does anyone disagree that applies? No. Okay. The next proposed violation is 37 592A. Says no person licensed by the board shall permit any person that is employed, employed or under the supervision or control to practice cosmetology without an appropriate license. Does anybody disagree? No. <coughs> the next violation proposed is by Statute 37 600 A, engaging in unprofessional conduct likely to endanger the health, safety, and welfare of the public. Anybody disagree that that applies? <laughs> the next violation is of Revised Statute 37, 600 which is a violation of any provision of the chapter which includes rule violations <clears throat> by allowing an unlicensed individual to perform aesthetic services at Hollywood and on the spot. Does anybody disagree that that applies? No. Moving on to the proposed order, you have four violations, which um, enables the board to revoke, suspend, fine, and assess costs for any combination thereof um, for this license. Does anybody believe the license should be revoked? No. 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 Okay, so we'll remove that as an option. Does anybody agree that the license should be suspended and or placed on probation? Yes. 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 Does anybody have a suggestion as to the term of probation, probation for the salon, and while the term would be one year? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The term to be the same? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the license would be suspended um, and remain active until all fines and costs are paid and orders comply with the license could then be reinstated on probation for a period of one year. Mm -hmm. Okay, the recommended conditions of probation are that within 15 days of the order, these are all the same reporting requirements that you have for the salon. And so um, you change the 15 days to January 4th in the other order. So does everybody agree this thing should be done in this order? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those would be all the one through four would be the same reporting requirements. Does anybody disagree with those? No. Do two and three apply? Well, I think he's the one that has to physically do it on behalf of the salon. He's the company. Okay. He's responsible for the salon. Mm -hmm. Then um, condition number five, recommend 
recommendation is to place this border in a conspicuous place near the manicurist license. Does everybody agree with that? Yes. yes. Number six would be that the um, salon and owner cannot violate or be found guilty of violating any state or federal laws or regulation pertaining to manicures or cosmetology salons. Mm -hmm. And then the um, other order, and we've already just a little bit different. I think it's the same. Does anyone disagree with that? Mm -hmm. All right, the proposed fine is $800. Does anybody disagree with that? Okay. So the proposed um, cost to be assessed, assessed against the licensee is going to be assessed against the salon. Do you believe there is an additional assessment needed against the individual? I do. I do. And do you have a proposal on that? Um, I think we're um, for the salon because the salon can't uh, suggest, offer, or do the violation itself. It's the individual. Okay, in the first case, you assessed $600 mm -hmm. to the salon and a new cost to the individual. In this case, I want to subject. I want to propose a fine against the individual who's responsible for this. There is a fine. Mm -hmm. We're talking about cost yeah. right now. Yeah. Right. <coughs> okay. I'm reading. I'm, thought, I'm sorry. I'm reading. So the cost. Do you agree? The will cost. be covered mm -hmm. under one the first. Right. Just one time. Just one time. Yeah. Yeah. So we would just remove any language that deals with cost in this order. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, Ms. Morris, can I tell you something on, on your proposed findings on number five of the proposed findings? It says, last since certified mailing was received at the address of record on November 2nd. Tasha told me that number second one right. It was received there, but I don't know the day. So that's okay, in her testimony, yeah. Anybody have a problem with removing paragraph five on November 2nd, 2015, just end the sentence that it was received at the address of record? No problem. Okay. Okay. Um, so under the findings of fact, one of the five would be accepted as Kevin, with the exception of the November 2nd, 2015 date in paragraph number five. Um, number six would show, we would show that no one appeared on behalf of Mr. Lee for the hearing. Next and then the conclusions of law would be accepted as proposed. The order would provide for a suspension of the license until a cost and fines um, set forth in the order are paid, and thereafter the license would be placed on one year <coughs> of supervised probation subject to the terms proposed. The licensee would be assessed a fine of $800, and there would be no cost assessment, so references to costs um, that are inapplicable would be removed from the proposed order. Does anybody have any revisions to that? Yeah, I have a I make a motion that we accept. Sure. Okay. So so and the and revised. I have a second. I second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Let's see. So everybody's ready. We get ready for Christmas. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. This young lady said she has a question. I'm sorry. It's an out of joy. My question. I just wanted to know, not knowing how to go, knowing how to go this goal. Just wanted to know at what point. Um, as an inspector to the Savannah in the comment that he made to you all earlier in reference to the consent agreements. At what point could I? Is there a point that I could address? So, this, no. no, okay, just wanted to know if there was a question. No. Okay. Uh, I did want to ask, Tosh, you can probably tell me this. After the order goes out, how soon after you do they go by to check the inspector? You have a, uh, date. Well, we That's a good question. Yeah, we don't have a specific date. We do. 
to buy something. Maybe within 30 days from now. Yeah, probably mm -hmm. so. To make sure everything is. Well, yeah, Steve. Mr. Gatch, maybe look at it. Yeah, that. look at seeing how soon after they get the order to some, one of the inspectors go by to make sure everything's in compliance. I think it's good to have a specific time yeah. that it should be addressed. Sure. <coughs> Everybody has a very Merry Christmas. And like I said before, be I help a good healthy Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you mean?